Welcome back. This is my favorite week of the month. It's the week where we get to put out the challenge again. Now, remember last month's challenge it was the first challenge you had, and there were a few things that you needed to do. Um, don't worry if you didn't get to them. Uh, I know it is quite daunting when you take on these challenges for the first time, but it's months two now, and um, I want to encourage you and um, this month, I want you to make a point of meeting all of the challenges. It's quite simple, quite easy. Remember the challenges? Remember what we said? The first challenge is to meet with a master. So remember to set up your meeting with somebody, spend time with somebody during this month. Um, if you have done that in the past month, don't you want to just type in the, in the comment box how that went? Just give me a little bit of feedback. Just share with me what happened during your meeting, whether you learned something, whether there was an impact, it had an impact on your life. Just share in the comment box. Remember, guys, that the comment box is private. I'm, I'm not going to share that with anybody else um, unless you want me to, but, but I'm not going to. I'm, it's, it's for my personal viewing, and it just gives me a little bit of feedback on uh, what you guys are going through and whether the steps working for you. So meet with the challenge was the first one. Um, research a sage. Um, so who, who did you research? Again, type that in the chat box or in the comment box below. Let me know who the sage was that you researched um, this month, who your heroes were. And maybe I can go and research some of those as well. And then um, last of all, you needed to study a thesis. And um, the book that we chatted about last week, I think it was uh, Simon Sinek and Start With Why. How did you find the book? Uh, did you at least watch the book summary? And then if you did go out and read the book, don't you want to type some comments below? And uh, that brings me to this month's book. Uh, this month's book is, is truly an amazing book. It's called The Richest Man in Babylon. Now, a lot of the books that I really enjoy are those those books that were written ages ago. Those books that are kind of like um, like folk tales. They they uh, it's like a parable. It's like a story of this lost hero, and uh, or long lost hero from the past, and the, the scrolls or the lessons that we can learn from them. And and this book, The Richest Man in Babylon, was written in 1926 by uh, George Clason. Um, an amazing book. And again. I've put a, a little video below this for you, just a book summary that um, where someone has summarized the book for you and this goes through the 10 lessons from the richest man in Babylon. I'm going to share my top four um, parables or my top four lessons that I've learned from this book with you in a moment. But I really would encourage you to go ahead and read this book. This is a, a very short book. It's an easy read. You could probably read it in a day if you if you had some time. Just relax, take the book and read it. But the lessons in this book are truly, truly amazing. Life-changing lessons. And in fact, these lessons, I wish I had applied these lessons way back 25 years ago when I started in business especially the first one. And the first lesson that I um, took from this book is the lesson where he asks us to pay ourselves first. So pay yourself first. That's the, that's the first lesson. And, and when he says pay yourself first, he doesn't mean take the money in your business and pay your salary first before you pay anybody else. That's not what he, what he means. Although there are some... Uh, business coaches out there that subscribe to that principle. I don't subscribe to that principle, by the way. I don't believe that you should pay yourself first and the guys who are working for you don't get paid. I believe that the people that are working for you are your responsibility and they have undertaken a contract with you to provide a certain service for which you have to pay them. And I do believe, and I've always paid my staff first, um, when it comes to that. But what he's talking about here when he says pay yourself first, he talk, he's talking about the money that comes to you. So when you receive your money from your business or, or if you're working for a salary, you're receiving your salary. But even if you are working for, your, for yourself, if you have a business, uh, you still need to pay yourself a salary out of the business. So when you receive your salary, you, you don't take the money and pay the bank first and pay your, your debtors first and pay your credit card first if you have and pay your electricity or your, your gas or your, your heating or any of those. You don't pay those bills first. You take your salary and you pay a portion of that salary to yourself first. And, and by yourself, 
It means that you, you're going to put that money aside for yourself. You're going to save that money, put that money in, into a savings account or a different kind of account or an investment account where, where that money comes to you first. And when you start um, practicing this principle of paying yourself first, paying that, um, in, in the book, he, he, he takes a, a number of 10% and he said, pay 10% to yourself first. And I believe that's actually quite a good principle. So what I've been doing for the last oh, couple of years is I've been taking 10% of my money every month. As the money comes into my account, I take 10% and I'm investing that money into a separate wallet. Now, in, in those days, he talks about putting the money in your wallet and leaving it in your wallet. And he says, if you pay yourself first um, over a period of time, you'll have a fat wallet. Now, I have a, a, a wallet and it's, a, it's like a bank account wallet. And I pay that money into that wallet every month. And it's amazing how that money has grown. Um, and I've, I've actually invested the money, the money that I pay myself first, I put into investment account and it gets invested. And that wallet has actually grown quite fat. So that's the first and probably the most important lesson that I've taken from this book is to pay myself first. Lesson number two, control your expenses. And there we're talking about um, taking your expenses and controlling them, uh, looking at your needs and your wants. So there's a difference between needs and wants. So the needs are the things you, you have to, you can't go without every month. The things that you have to pay every month, those are your needs. Your wants are outside of that. Your wants are, are your nice to haves. They are things that you don't necessarily have to have every month. And so what we like to do with our clients is we we help them take uh, those needs list the needs and then put a circle around your needs in other words you close the circle on your needs and what we're trying to achieve here is we're trying to say that if your income goes up you shouldn't be pushing your needs up as well like i'm earning more money now and therefore i need a bigger car or a better car or a new suit because the old ones um just not as nice as a new one. So what we find happens with a lot of people is that as their income goes up, so does their need. So do their needs go up? We need bigger and we need more and we need better and we need the latest. Uh, those are needs. Those are wants. So if you put a circle around your needs, in other words, you close that circle on your needs and you don't increase your needs, the money that's outside of the circle, if your, if your income goes up, that money uh, is not yours. That money is um, ha has got a specific task and a job to do. And I'll talk about that now. But let's just stick to that, controlling your expenses. So I, I want you to think about this very carefully. And I want you to go and list all of your expenses. The things that you have to pay every month, the things that you can't go without, the things that you need, your needs. And then I want you to draw a circle around that. And then I want you to take um, all of the money that's outside of that, or if you're short, then you obviously need to be earning a little bit more. You need to make a little bit more out of your business. But the money that's outside of that circle, that money, I want you to listen to this next principle. So the next principle says, don't just work for money. And, and what he's meaning here is that you shouldn't just be working for money. You should also have money working for you. Okay, so think about the closed circle, the money that's outside of that closed circle, the extra money, the money that's over. That money, you should be putting overalls on that money and you should be sending that money out to start working for you. That money should start bringing in a return of its own. That's where that money needs to be invested wisely. Be very careful who you invest with. There are a lot of people out there that will be happy to take your money from you. So, um, so take that money that you're putting to work and invest it in something, in something that's going to give you a return on your investment. Um, invest it in an asset. And uh, when I say invest it in an asset, you, you really need to understand the difference between an asset and liability. And you need to be sure that when you're investing that money, you are investing it in an asset. Now, I spoke earlier about, um, about paying yourself first. We've spoken about controlling expenses. And then don't let money work for you. Now, when I pay myself first, that 10%, I'm investing that money as well 
that money is working for me as well. When I talk about controlling my expenses, I close the circle on my needs, the money outside of that, um, that money also I put to work and I let that money work for me. So I've got money working for me all the time. I've got money working for me uh, on fixed investments, on short-term investments, on, on other investments. I mean, you, you can even invest some of the money back into your business, lend it back to your business, a loan account, and the money, that's a, that's a good investment, uh, provided, of course, you can prove or you can justify a return on that investment. So that's principle number three. And then the last principle, that I want to take from the book that, that really is one of the top ones for me is to increase your ability to earn. And what we're talking about here is for you to grow, for you to learn more, for you to understand more, for you to, to uh, become more valuable so that you then become wiser and you have a greater ability to learn. I learn more every month. And, and I know you guys to be quite honest, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be watching this video if you're not doing that. And so this principle is truly amazing because remember that the more you increase your value, the more you can earn. And the more valuable you become, the more you can earn. I mean, it's, it's common sense, really. So increase your ability to earn by learning uh, more about, uh, about, about investments, about um, understanding and controlling your expenses, about getting money to work for you, about reinvesting, all that kind of stuff. But just like increase your, your abilities all the time. Learn more things all, all the time. Look at your, at, at your um, whatever field you're working in, whatever field you, you operate in. Just, you know, increase your ability. Increase your abilities. Increase your skills. Increase your knowledge. Grow, because as you grow, you're increasing your capacity to earn as well. Don't ever stand still. Don't ever sit still and think to yourself, I, I know it all. I have arrived. I don't need to learn anymore. I can now start teaching other people. It doesn't work like that. Constantly, constantly increase your ability to, to earn. So that's, that's just with this um, in closing. Let me leave you with a challenge. How about you make a commitment right now that you will become a lifelong learner, that you will commit your, the rest of your life to learning, to growing, and to increasing your value, value. I trust that you've enjoyed this as much as I have. I, I love these books. I, I love these sessions. I, I love the challenges because I love growing and I love meeting people who grow. So don't forget to put your comments in the comment box below. Share with me some of what you're going through, some of what you're learning. And, um, and take up the challenge. Remember, this is month, month two. In month one, I was a little bit lenient. But in month two, uh, there's um, no leniency. I want you to take up all the challenges. I want you to do all the challenges. Enjoy the summary below. And we'll see you again next month.